Howdy folks, this is the Dynam C188 from Gearvest. It's a crop duster style of plane, I guess, or agricultural plane, often also used as a glider tow plane uh, in real life. Looks like a great plane to fly. Let's get into it. It comes pretty well packed with individual boxes and plastic bags, polystyrene protection. All right, what comes in the box? We have these nice looking wings with pre-installed flaps and ailerons, very substantial ailerons, nice control horns, turn down wing tips that get glued onto the uh, wings there, a big center section, vertical and horizontal stabilizers, Got some wing support struts there, two 12 by 6 props I think they are. Decals, landing gear, bits and pieces including some wing joining carbon fibre and a bit of an instruction manual there. All looks really nice quality. Little canopy there and a pilot. All the wiring coming through and a fair bit of space with some batteries in there. Very nice. Wingspan is 1500 millimeters, 40 amp ESC. Motor is a BM3720A, a 650kV. Nice slow spinning motor. I like slow motors. Designed to run on a 4S2200. Without any further delay, let's get building. Okay, the first step is to glue the wings onto the main midsection and there's a bit of dihedral there so you have to make sure you butt that up properly and it's a good idea to pull these wires out of the way too. Uh, I'm just going to use hot, hot glue for this, there's nothing wrong with that. And it sets nice and quickly too. So you just have to make sure it's the gap is closed and it's buttered right up to get the angle, the dihedral angle correct. When the struts get connected they will pull it uh, into the correct dihedral angle anyway so it's not that crucial really. And now we put these fiberglass uh, strengthening rods in. And I might use sort of a rubber cement for that one. I've got some Yoohoo pour, that'll be perfect for the job because it'll give me a bit more extra time to position the spars. I found with, the, with hot glue you can get into trouble uh, with the glue going off before you get the spar into position. Ah, messy, messy. And we do the same for the other side. And there's the wing together. Excellent. Now we can glue the turn down ends on, just using hot glue. Now we don't need to glue it to the aileron, so it's only just going to be that little bit there. Sweet. And the other end. We did actually sustain a little bit of damage in transit. That's the little under the tail on the fuselage. So I just need to glue that back on. That's no drama. All these models end up with a little bit of damage. Usually it's uh, unusual to get totally undamaged model in the post from China, but that's an easy fix. Okay, control horns for the horizontal and vertical stabilizer. And they say to use the 14 and 16 millimeter screws. They actually mean metal threads or bolts rather than screws. So I'm guessing the elevator will be the 14 millimeter metal threads. Yeah, that goes through nicely. So that'll be 14 millimeter for the elevator, 16 millimeter for the rudder. These are seriously good control horns. Yeah, they've got the little bracing bits, good quality, nice and solid. And a wide base too, actually designed for foam rather than balsa like a lot of uh, the other control horns are. That's good. So it's on the bottom of the elevator and on the right hand side of the rudder. 
so now we can put the vertical and horizontal stabilizers on and they just slot together nicely then into the fuselage there's a little ridge for the push rod to lie in there so it's a 25 millimeter screw 20 millimeter screw will do the job there we go that's gripping in and pulling it in and another one here very good that is solidly affixed now excellent all right now i can connect the rudder and elevator push rods i really should make up some safety bands i will do later on i need to make sure they're centered and adjust the length of the push rod or the clevis on the push rod and i'll do that before i put the wing on because i won't get access to that once the wing is on so i have centered up the servo using my servo tester down there now i've got to shorten this push rod by quite a lot pliers to hold that there you go that'll do it Same with the rudder now. A little bit of damage. I'm going to have to take a little bit off the bottom of the, the rudder, I think. That tail is clashing with it there. I have now run the servo wires along the bottom of the wing end up through that little hole there. The channel they've provided isn't really wide enough for two wires to run through there, so I had to widen it out a bit with a screwdriver and, and actually cut out a little bit for the servo connector for the uh, wire lead for the flaps to go get buried in the wing and I'll cover them with tape later on just to neaten it all up but now flaps and aileron wires are coming up through the wing and I've also swapped out the battery connector from a Deans to a, a XT60 now it's time to connect the steerable tail wheel which has a very interesting steering method it has a couple of spring loaded push rods going to the little uh, controller arm there just a couple of screws to hold that in there we go just a couple of two mil by six millimeter screws they're tiny they're the smallest ones and now we hook up these little springs somehow oh there we go just need to open up those springs a little bit close them down once they are in position so that's pretty right i'm going to squeeze them shut a bit now that's better there we go steerable tail wheel is up and running and we have a linkage adjuster connected to the uh, rudder servo um, to make sure the wheel is steering in the right direction so i'll just tighten that up now uh, now I'm fitting the wing. I've passed the flap wire lead and the separate ailerons up into the body. Now the instructions say to mount using 3mm by 25mm screws. We've got 3mm by 25mm bolts and 35mm sort of wide head bolts. So I'm guessing the 25mm narrower head mount in the back there. And the wide head ones hold the landing gear on oh there we go there's a little cover oh we've got some double-sided tape on there too put the landing gear in and now we put the little cover on there we go that's looking better now i found a slight problem with the wing struts that bend should go up rather than down so i'm i'm guessing they've glued the the metal bit into the foam bit up the wrong way yuck horrible glue they use there that's going to fit there we go, that's 
biting in now. And that holds the wing at the right dihedral. Glue this back on. There we go. That's the way to do it. And the same for the other side. It's a bit ugly there, unfortunately. Okay, fitting the prop now, we've got the spinner plate. Then the prop goes on. Numbers facing forward. Washer. Nut. So how is that going to go? To make sure the screws are going to line up with the position of the prop. Excellent. I haven't glued the canopy on yet because I think this is just begging for a, a panning FPV camera in there. That would be a brilliant view from in there, I think, doing FPV. So I'm going to maybe hinge that somehow so that I can get access in there. All right, it's time for the run-up test. I have 4S battery plugged in. Twenty-four amps. That was drawing for a forty-amp ESC, so that's fine. There we have the Cessna C188 from Dynam and Gearbest. That is an awesome-looking plane. I need to put the rest of the decals on and tweak the programming and take it for a fly. Thanks for watching.